Okay, so the first party I want to talk about is the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party was established in 1824, uh, and really Andrew Jackson, the president Andrew Jackson, is kind of a leader. And we're going to learn about their platforms, their main beliefs, what people tend to vote Democrat, and understand the concepts behind their ideas, how, how these actual ideas are supposed to work in practice. And we're going to find out that the Republicans are going to be very much the opposite of the Democrats on almost every level. So we're going to start with their ideology. And their ideology is to the left. They are considered leftists, which means that they are liberal. And ideology is an idea and belief system that's established by the party in this case. And an ideologue is somebody that really follows what the party believes. So if you hear them talk about a politician and they say that they're, they're an ideologue, that means that they're very dedicated to the ideas of their party and they stick to that party. They believe in what's called a mixed economy, and a mixed economy means that you have a lot of regulation through the government. So the government has to mix in with the private sector and the free economy to check and balance the companies, or the companies will do what they want, and it could get pretty out of control. And that's what the Democrats believe. The government must regulate business for citizen safety is a very strong belief of the Democrats. Um, some examples of this would be... Uh, in terms of pollution could, could hurt everybody so they're going to heavily regulate that food they'd be stronger on food regulations they want people to have the information of like calories and labeling systems they push for that stuff uh, and try to educate people on the consequences of their choices so that's the government should have to step in and make sure food and everything is clean and they have a strong belief that that they do that the government does this to protect everyone for the health of everyone they be, believe in what's called a, that people should pay was a progressive tax. The more money you make, the more taxes you pay uh, in terms of percentage. So under a progressive tax, and that is the system we currently have in America, uh, the, I think the top bra uh, tax bracket right now is 38%. So the, the tax percentage, the percentage progresses, it goes up to a certain point based on how much money you make income wise so Bill Gates, Warren Buffett or some of the wealthiest men in the United States they're gonna pay about 38 percent taxes and that's the maximum at this time it used to be 39 percent it's actually gone down a percent uh, under the Bush tax cuts so we might see that come back up so the maximum is 38 percent right now so it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire or a millionaire like LeBron James might be a millionaire Bill Gates is a billionaire they get maxed out at 30% income tax. The idea is that money will come back and support the, the people that don't have money, and we use that money for the programs that the Democrats are going to establish, and we'll talk about those. On the other end, though, somebody makes $10,000 or makes under $20,000 a year who's considered living in poverty might actually not pay any taxes. They'll be at 1% or 0% taxes because the government says they want uh, – 38% of $10,000 is $3,800. They would have hardly any money to survive on, and it's going to have a really negative impact on the person that's poor and does not have a lot of money. So in a progressive tax, the wealthiest people pay the highest tax bracket, which is 38%, and lower-income people have pay, pay the least amount of taxes, which could be even 0%. And there is some cases where you might actually get taxes back under what's called an, an earned income credit, EOC, uh, EIC, and then middle class is kind of in the middle. Are there are about thirty percent taxes, uh, and it just goes up from there. So wealthier people pay a higher percentage of taxes, and lower income people pay a lesser tax. That's a progressive tax. Very important concept. The reason you'll pay taxes, and we're going to break this down, is for public education, Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, and possibly universal health care. And we're going to talk about these ideas uh, coming up and. They have a strong belief that we should pay taxes. They have a good education system. Um, they're also considered progressive in addition to being liberal. And somebody that's progressive is always focused on the future. Uh, and the main idea is that you would invest in the future, a better future for America. So a true progressive would want to spend all their money on education because education is the future. And that's the real investment, that your generation is better and has a better country to live in than my generation. 
So if we educate you and you, you get better jobs and you'll make better decisions for the, the whole country, that's progressivism. It's not the same as liberalism, but progressives tend to vote Democrat more so than Republican. Liberals are going to have, uh, we'll learn about the difference between socially liberal people that have strong beliefs about what, what the government's role is in society. Now, a couple more ideas. An environment is more important than business, and this limit they, there's limits pollution production. So, if it become if it's between a business putting out a lot of pollution, and a um, and the business itself, they're going to choose uh, to cut back on the pollution because the, the environment's important to everyone. So they would say the whole of the country and the world and us breathing clean air is more important than the business. And we're going to find out Republicans are not going to agree with that because they'll say, well, the more regulations, which means the government makes expectations and watches over these businesses, the more money they have to pay for these air filters or solar energy or all this stuff for the environment. And what that does is that drives the business out of America or it drives the business uh, into the ground. And they, they have to lay off people and then less people have jobs and it's bad for the economy. And the Democrats are saying, no, this will actually create jobs if you have to use renewable energy like solar power. Solar power uh, energy and wind power like Obama had done in his first campaign, they put a lot of bills through that would give incentives to companies. So this would create a new economy uh, where there's businesses that are focused on solar power. But in most cases, we do see a lot of times, that, especially with manufacturing, the businesses have gone to China. And China is well known to have almost no restrictions on pollution and uh, several people I've talked to have come back from China and say it's just absolutely out of control. The air is so dirty and filthy and the government just allows the companies to do what they want. And I read an article once where a woman actually said that she could not open her windows at nighttime in Beijing because at nighttime trucks are allowed to come through on the streets, not during the day because the pollution is so bad. And if you left your window open, she said you'd wake up, you'd be covered in soot and dirt. That's how disgusting it is. So that's one of the baits on the environment versus the businesses. Workers are entitled to a livable wage and benefit. And we call that livable wage uh, minimum wage. And that was established by the Democrats. And it's this idea that you, there's a bottom line. There's a least amount of money you can pay somebody that's fair. And the idea is that they'd be able to at least support themselves doesn't mean you're going to be rich but the idea is that minimum wage originally you could have a place to live food to eat clothes on your back and you have some way to get to work like taking the bus but now we know for the last four or five years that the minimum wage is no longer a livable wage so people cannot live on the minimum wage and take care of themselves so what they do is they have to lean on other programs from the government or ask for help from individuals to take care of themselves and the question is should the minimum wage be raised and the democrats are going to say absolutely it should be a wage that's big enough for people to take care of themselves and the republicans are going to say no not at all that and some republicans will go as far as say we shouldn't have minimum wage at all that what people are willing to pay you is what you should uh you can either take it or, or leave it it's up to you and people have choices over the the price of their labor very important concept, Keynesian economics. This is a term that Republicans hate to hear. Democrats use pretty regularly to explain when things are bad. So just, it's a very complex economic theory, but we're just going to get into the gist of it, just the main idea. That the government gives money back to the lower class, and they will spend it and stimulate the economy. So under Keynesian economics, and Maynard Keynes is a famous economist out of Great Britain, if things are bad, and the economy is bad, so in 2008 when... The economy crashed, and we kind of had a uh, and we had a depression or a recession, where the economy actually got smaller. You would use Keynesian economics to stimulate the economy. So the government would give money back to the lower class, and they'll spend it and stimulate the economy. So if you give the money back to the lower class, they'll take that money and they'll spend it out of necessity. And that seems to run pretty true. If somebody has no money and give them a hundred dollars back on their taxes, they're going to go buy stuff. And the idea is under Keynesian economics that they'll go buy. Um, They'll go buy some new chips or toothpaste at the at Shop and Save. And they'll spend their money at Shop and Save, and then Shop and Save has to hire more people because everybody's coming in buying stuff, and they'll get more jobs and cut down on unemployment. And then even the wealthy capitalist, the person who owns Shop and Save at the top, the store owners and the business owners are going to make money because their businesses are booming. The economy will stimulate, and things will be better. 
So that is the Democratic idea. And you can see there's the donkey and there's the famous uh, painting of Obama, who's a Democrat. We'll watch the vocabulary in class. And then we'll start breaking down some of these programs. So generally support government funding of, and the first program, very important, is Medicare. Medicare is a program where we take care of the elderly. So in, health, in terms of health care, health insurance companies are in the business of making money. Most businesses, their goal is to make profit, to maximize their profits. That's the natural uh, law of economics. Well, Medicare is a program to help people who are 65 and up, where the government steps in and starts paying for the health care because in the past, people that were older, the insurance companies didn't want to insure because the reality is, is when you start getting into your 60s, you're getting, you'll be getting sicker more, you'll need to go to the hospital more, you'll need more medications, and honestly, you will at some time, you're going to pass away. So that's very expensive to go in a hospital for three months and then pass away. So insurance companies didn't really want to pay for this because it cut into their profits. So now Lyndon Baines Johnson, the president uh, that signed the Civil Rights Act, really pushed for a Medicare system where if you're 65 or up, now you can just go to the doctor and you still have costs. You have to pay for your prescriptions and other things, but the government is going to help you out and really help take care, make sure that you can go to the doctor and if you get sick, you're taken care of if you're 65 and up for the elderly. Medicaid works on the opposite group. So the elderly works on children, but it's only for children if their parents are impoverished. So if your parents make uh, under 22,000 a year are considered in poverty, they look at how much your income is. The government will actually step in and it'll aid children and also people that are handicapped that may need that extra help. So the idea is, well, if the parents aren't responsible or the parents aren't making enough money to take care of the kids, then the government needs to step in and make sure those kids are taken care of because we also know children that live in poverty have higher rates of going to the doctor and they need health problems because they're exposed to more pollution and they don't eat as healthy and there's other causes. So Medicare takes care of the elderly, Medicaid aids the uh, people with disability and children. Social Security and uh, the first two programs are both formed by were signed into law by Lyndon Baines Johnson. He really pushed for it, and the Democrats at that time. Social Security is the creation of many people consider as the father of the Democratic Party today, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And Obama would be, as said, he's a big fan of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt created this system. It's one of the first public systems that would would be for everybody called Social Security where when you turn 65, the government gives you a check to help take care of yourself. Now, this is not retirement. Social Security, people get confused. They think that this is a retirement fund. It's not. It's money there to make sure you have enough money for your food, the clothes on your back, and a place to stay and help maybe with some of your medical costs. It's not enough money to really take care of yourself well. So you're supposed to still save money and get ready for retirement. In addition to this, this is just to help out. I think the maximum checks are something like only $1,800 a month. So you could see why people that have a lot of money are very upset because if they pay a lot in Social Security, then when they turn 65, they only get $1,800 back. So this really supports people that um, don't have a lot of money. The way the system works is you presently, you pay a lot of, we pay into the system while we're working today, and then when you're 65, you take the money out when you probably are getting too old or you can't work. And we've had some problems with this because... There's not enough people really paying into the system currently. Also, the government is taking money out of Social Security and spend it on other things when it's supposed to just be used for Social Security. But at this time, when you reach the age of 65, you will get some kind of Social Security check. Almost everybody pays Social Security except for teachers and a couple of public workers because we have a different system. But we still pay into a system that's almost exactly the same. Public assistance are welfare programs, so this would be like public housing or Section 8, which would be reduced price housing. Uh, not always necessarily free, but like it'd be an apartment complex where maybe the rent's $200 or it's income based, which is based on how much money the person makes to make sure that we don't have a lot of people are homeless was the idea. And this again was established under Linda Baines Johnson under the war on poverty. The idea we create public housing so people aren't on the streets or homeless. Also, some welfare programs for in, individual people would be something like um, EBT cards. It used to be called food stamps. Or the idea if somebody's got kids, they have money so that they can eat and they're not starving. 
so the government will give them a like almost like a credit card with money on it that they can buy food to take care of the children and themselves that would be under uh, welfare programs and then many Democrat, Democrats but not all believe in what's called universal health care they, they, one day the government will just provide health care we won't have private hospitals anymore so everybody could just go to a doctor when you're sick and uh, a lot of people have been leaning towards this and the Democrats because the cost of health care is going up about 7% per year and while people think that um, insurance covers everything it does it only covers about 80% uh, with the best insurance. So, for example, uh, my father got sick with a stroke, and he was a doctor, and he had the best insurance out there. And he would go into intensive care, and intensive care can range from five to twenty thousand dollars a day, just for one day in, in this hospital, because all the machinery and the, the special care. So, if you do the math, after he'd been in the hospital for six months, he comes out, he's got a huge bill where it might have cost a million dollars from to go to the hospital. He still owes two hundred thousand dollars. So people don't understand that the, the number one reason people lose social class, they go down from upper class or upper middle class to a lower or middle class is because of health care. The health care costs are just so expensive in America. So if you run up a bill for $200,000 and, and the insurance company only pays 80%, you still owe $40,000. And to think about it again, if you're sick now and you're disabled, you can't work. So on top of not working, you have big health, you have big um, costs for the hospital. So some people, some Democrats argue that we should just have health care for everyone. We just pay for it in taxes, and that would be a cheaper, more efficient system. And we're going to watch the video in class. That's Nancy Pelosi. She's one of the most powerful uh, women in the Democratic Party. And then you can see Hillary Clinton to the right. Also, the Democrats are socially liberal. And we're going to find what somebody that's socially liberal is. Because you could be socially liberal and be a Republican as well. Social, socially liberal people are people that believe personal privacy and protection of minority rights are more important than majority views. So you can see right here, if it's between majority rights and minority views, they're going to pick the minorities' rights. So minorities are not just groups of people of color like African Americans or Hispanics. It could also be religious and ethnic minorities like Jewish people or Muslims or immigrants that we try to protect their rights from the majority where most people uh, might be threatened or don't are have different views than those groups because they're the majority. Uh, number one, and this is a highly debated issue, abortion should be legal. They're pro-choice. And we have what, call, what are called single-issue voters, and they're people that tend to vote uh, for pro-choice or pro-life. And pro-choice and women tend to be more pro-choice and the Democratic Party is made up about 65% women so some people vote just against or for this issue which is not always a great idea uh, you have to understand how the government works two forcing prayer in schools is unconstitutional so that would be an example of minority rights are being infringed by the majority so most Americans are Christian so if you're in a public school and people are leading Christian prayers it can make the um, minority, the Jewish people or the Muslims or the atheists, people that don't believe in God, or deists, people that believe in God and don't like organized religion, can make them uncomfortable. or And they shouldn't be forced to uh, have to pledge uh, allegiance to the flag, for example, because that is against the religion if you're Jehovah Witness or so forth and so on. And you can see there's Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton on their side. Also, capital punishment should be illegal. They think that they're against the death penalty. They think it's expensive. Uh, it costs about a million dollars more per person, and it teaches revenge, and that killing is right in society, and it sends the wrong, mer the wrong message. So most Democrats are against the death penalty. And finally, somebody socially liberal is for is the government's responsibility to fight a war on poverty and help those in need. So they think it's the government's responsibility to help people in need, not just the... Um, uh, not uh, because who else would clean up the mess? And we'll talk about, the Republicans differ on this, but the government needs, all these ideas that you would have Section 8 and welfare or EBT cards go under the Democrats, and we're, they're responsible for, the government is responsible to take care of everybody in society if something goes wrong or they're homeless, or th all those social programs. So those are people that are socially liberal. And again, you could be socially liberal and be a Republican or another party. So the strongest supporters of Democrats are the middle class, 
Those middle class people tend to vote Democrat. Working class, people that do a lot of hands-on, like carpenters, electricians, they tend to vote more Democrat. Uh, lower class people, people have a lower income because they use the social welfare programs like welfare, Section 8, and um, all these other programs that help take care of the, their family and themselves. And then you can see in the picture on the right, you've got, or, you have uh, cities, and then academic college professors, universities tend to be more liberal and more oriented towards helping people uh, using the government. Unions are definitely tend to be more Democrat. Uh, a union in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see a strike is when workers get together, put their money together, and they work together to, to uh, get better wages for the employees. It's mo majority female. It's mostly female, about 65%. African-Americans are the most dominant group in terms of uh, percentage-wise. About 90% of African-Americans vote Democrat. Very, very high percentage are Democrat in the, uh, out of any other group. My other minorities, like Hispanics, are about 75% Democrat. Jewish people tend to be Democrat. Muslims. Immigrants are tend to be Democrat. Not all, but most. The majority are Democrat um, because they, they support immigration laws. Progressives, and we talked about what that is, somebody that focuses on the future and education. And finally, they're socially liberal people. So people who are socially liberal people tend to be Democrat. Now we're going to look at a map of the United States, and we've talked about this before. Democrats dominate urban or cities. So most cities have Democratic mayors and more of a Democratic population in terms of voting. Northeastern states in the top, the top right corner, you can see they're blue. New York, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts tend to be Democrat. Northwestern states of California, so on the coast, on the Pacific Coast, California, Oregon, the tend and uh, Washington tend to be Democrat. And then the Great Lakes states, so around the Great Lakes like Michigan, Illinois, Scots tend to be Democrat. Okay, we're going to start talking about the Democrats in this, on this video, and then the next video, we're going to talk about other parties, and we're getting into the Republicans, which are going to be pretty clearly the opposite of the Democrats in many ways. Thanks for checking in. Have a great one.